catapult the visions from third eyes onto a canvas draping the world. No regrets or mistakes to correct. All intentions will be flung forward. Flying paint exploding upon white. Clouds resemble falling torpedoes. Fueled by hue, nuclear fission mocked when we brighten all definitions. Crevices, nooks, crannies, holes shellacked with our art attacking censorship. We repeal the laws of the dark box, confining absolute zero, void. Ciphering around the cyclical embellishment from fascism washed. Revisit the box of crayons used by fledgling poets with hoarse voices. Expanding rainbow double vision, rubies, topaz, sapphires raining. Jasper falls following emerald, amethyst now precedes birth of chrome. Jewels now fuse, forming new perceptions, chimes blown by wind capturing the light. Sing me songs reminiscent of birds tweeting in their network, flocking thought. Let them rise, double rainbow gleaming upon a world which was ravaged by war. With only two words, I can make a statement so infuriating that it would get me into deep trouble. As a result of using these two words together, I could be subjected to ostracism, yelling, cursing, and assault. These retributions, however, are the lesser of all evils. Speaking these two words can be the catalyst for arrest, imprisonment, and execution. Uttering these two words might be grounds for mental instability. Surely, they would not be taken seriously. One may wonder how this duet of conjoined characters I make reference to can be as offensive as I portray, especially after I mention that it contains no obscenities. This couplet of consonants and vowels is a sentence I use frequently. My colleagues and I have no qualms about saying them. In an ideal world, there would be no punishment in using these two words. In fact, one should be praised for their exclamation. Life would be more productive if we showed little fear in verbalizing the phrase. I disagree. Within the pavement seeps my sorrow, through these cracks flow all my pain. All this guilt is hard to swallow, wishing tears be masked by rain. Finding solace in the grayness, in reflections of the glass, broken into shards so heinous, hoping all of this will pass. Is the sky still blue? This I ask of you. You're my friend, I trust you tell the truth. I've been looking down so long As I walked along The only thing I see is as for gray All my colors have been fading Left only with black and white Blending into hell pervading Heaven, please send me your light Shut the portals of my sadness Stifle bouts of inner rage Please God, remove all my madness Give me guidance that is sage Concrete pavement stone It's all I've come to know Could someone tell me where my rainbows go? There's no colors anymore 
since you've closed the door and left me here alone with asphalt gray. I need fortitude to hang on. I want freedom from the hurt. Don't want to ever be ranked on. Can't wear this grief on my shirt. My feet tread along this tightrope, hoping that this string is taut. From the silver, I retain hope to rise up from the asphalt. Is the sky still blue? This I ask of you. You're my friend, I trust you tell the truth I've been looking down so long As I've walked along The only thing I see is asphalt gray The only thing I see is asphalt gray Within the chambers of my heart, the surge of life begins to flow, embracing tints and shades of green, keeping pretenses in check. You may see me as a nut, but in sight will surely cook. I do not intend to spook, but I do intend to chart. Navigating from this rut with the intention to grow, and I resolve to inspect, keeping all my ethics clean. With my wisdom I can glean, with my knowledge I can look, in the grand scheme I'm a speck of this vast galactic part. In this poem I can show that I heal the deepest cut. My eyes will never shut. I think you know what I mean. But my pupils will rest though. They've been trained without a book. Back and forth they choose to dart like they did in retrospect. With some fists I have been decked, feeling it within my gut, leaking lifeblood by the court, amidst the wrath I find my queen. When in love I'm not a crook, nor armed with arrows or bows. My aura rainbows glow as I hold my head erect. A nod evolves after it shook. Compact temple, sacred hut. Nothing standing in between this new journey that I start. Your mind will cook, air bubbles flow. In your heart, you'll stay in check. From soup to nuts, you'll find the green. It's ironic how lunar satellites are often feminine in nature, yet Venus bears none. Does she get intimidated by Mars since he bears Phobos and Deimos, orbiting spheres symbolic of fear and terror? 
love and war bridged by the egoistic earth. Judaism cannot be constricted to a prismatic reflection. It is every nuance of polychromatic refraction. Strolling through the spectrum, stopping occasionally to touch the rays and watch as a lover descends from a ribbon wrapped in darker and lighter shades of skin tone. Nice Jewish girls arrive from analog multiverses, diverse as planetary atmospheres. Dive into the sea of tranquility, and with the rings of Saturn, ye shall be wed. To the cosmic forces in the light that Aramaic scriptures evoke. Spots of crimson need not always represent filth, but the lifeblood insinuating that an oblate feminine cipher resembles the ova of stardust present within hexagrams, celestial representations resembling Israelite shields. Let us bathe within pools presenting piety, varieties of mitzvot within bubbles of soapy sacraments. Put your hand in this man's hand as he crushes the glass under his foot, for he strives to be happy with you as fortunes reverse towards rudimentary Rotations of Resilience. Dismembered, membranes ripped apart at the seams, seemingly fragmented whether it's meant to be only God knows in flames we reside side by side our limbs rest in embers flesh burning ghosts of ground wars floating upon bones ectoplasm healing the wounds of the cases in which spirits used to lie. Ay, Dante, las bombas están llamado. Children and animals of the beloved, welded towards Hades, residing upon the remains of wrists and knuckles. Twenty-eight bombers, took to the sky in April, leaving us and our bestial familiars to die by their hands and explosives. Then I take to the teeming of the rain, awakening me from these horrors, knowing that the events of Guernica could happen domestically, and the hand that writes the poetry that cries for mercy will be separated from the forearm with pen still gripped. I am on the other end of a string between aluminum alloys shaped like that which connects us without the inconvenience of angles. They say love can make us united and whole as prolactic elixir catalyzed by unconditional caring above all egotistical desires. 
yet we rarely discover interlocking fragments of crimson muscles fitting around souls like habits encasing wives of God. It may last years to discover true love, for poets aim to crack the code that unlocks the safe that bears the stone. It glows like a prism, streaming a matrix of alphanumeric pads scribed vertically within texts often taken literally. Scan your ego, determining whether it is possible to accept and espouse love parting the curtains of manipulation. Reciprocity shall vibrate as I straddle the string in unison with you keeping relations taut, tight as a mutual embrace, second only to the affection of saints, for when needs are neglected within a bond, it will fuse like ions, crystals forming multilateral facets that refract clarity, possessed only by us, fusing the clean lesion left by the ego. Imagine us lounging and dancing within the sanctuaries of vivid black light shadows. They gleam from crowns, dunning the royal responsibilities of rapture. Our conversations center around hedonism, the pure desire to abandon sanctities, adulterate the pavement, fluids, flowing, flowery fragrances. The locale remains unclear, for we could roam the urban sphere every midnight on every Saturday. Either way, black light afterglows paint the town violet, rosy cheeks capture the darkness, two lips quivering in the night, whistling effortlessly as zephyrs slide between the purse and the shivering, inducing shimmering. As soon as our eyes blink, the lounge changes shape and color. We are transported with every iteration between lashes that whip one another, flagellating the rods and cones, caressing colors. Newsprint may fly through atmospheres, jump cutting to new scenarios. Parties parked pavements, each crack in the sidewalk encouraging pitfalls between the shallowest of puddles. Reckless abandon becomes a way of life, raving with the wafting of the smoke, pervading the olfactory hairs, hooking into the optic nerves as vines link the pupils and plant irises in our lobes, whether protected by gray matter or dermal layers. I watch attentively as your sensuality starts to percolate. You are now nice and hot. I want to put some cream into you, stirring it in deeply. Your spirit is light. Your demeanor is sweet. Your essence is strong. Sometimes I like to whip the cream, adding some sugary goodness to the mix. For these gentle gestures make all the difference. You make me rise. You make me shine. Make me smile. I engulf myself within your pool of flesh, felicity, for you make me jittery. I ricochet off walls, 
just thinking about you. You put a sparkle in my eyes as I taste you, swishing you around in my mouth. Pupils dilate with delight. Cranial neurons shimmy. Muscles tighten as the last drop is consumed. You are definitely the best part of waking up. Allow me to add my two cents to the situation. In return, I would like you to subtract the rhetoric that exits your lips and assist me in keeping the visions from multiplying. Before I go off on a tangent, let me tell you about the problem I have evaluated. You see, it seems as if every move you make is calculated. I have tried to mind my P's and Q's regarding this issue, but I cannot help myself from arriving at the solution that your ego and pollution is planned out like a logic proof, or an algebraic matrix, or a quadratic equation, or a medical locomotive. From day one, I was able to graph the main points in my brain to the axes labeled X and Y. X signifies your attempts to censor others. Y, because you can. My rage is the product of your strategy to further an agenda. It is merely a fraction of this anger being portrayed. That's right, just a percentage. Your position on the number scale of aggravation cannot be located with mortal eyes. It stretches out to an infinite number of miles. There is no final integer. You see a range of things bother and depress me, and my mood not only swings like a pendulum and a grandfather clock, but also descends and ascends like a parabola. Therefore, I must dig within my brain and use prior knowledge obtained to plot a path across the map on the way to a poem marked with the black X. For the most part, I think I do a damn good job at getting from A to B without the help of a tutor. I am comfortable with what I know, and I embrace it. Whatever knowledge I may like is on me, but I know that you don't know squat if you think you know what little I know. You think I care? Hell no! I mean not for this writing to encompass a circular argument, but like a 180 degree angle, let's get something straight and settle the score. I am neither a letter nor a number nor a remedial student. I am just a man with a voice that some may consider noise that triggers violent waves. That is my right. Aren't we supposed to be equal? Shouldn't symbols resembling more than and less than not be applied or be crossed out? Can't we eliminate all unnecessary variables, all unnecessary formulas, all unnecessary postulates, all unnecessary theorems? All unnecessary Programs, diagrams, anagrams, acrostics, diagnostics, cross multiples. This long division has gone on for too long. Repeating multiple times like one third written as a decimal. Statistics do not reject this claim, although some want it to be a syntax error, or want to believe that I forgot to carry the two in my calculation. But the remainder of my tolerance hangs by an unraveling thread. I proudly sign my name on this thesis, and my colleagues would proudly co sign, given that they possess research on this behavior. So we pulled our our data together. We share a very reciprocal relationship, however. It does not take Fibonacci or Pascal or Apollonius or Euclid or Euler or Eratosthenes or Archimedes or Maimonides or Gematria or even the nation of Islam to deduce this verbal dilemma. Your calculations are wrong. The atmosphere provided is negative. The agenda cannot be defined, for it does not compute. Not by any means, not by any modes, not by any standard deviation. So tell me, how do you like them applications?